Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. I needed an external monitor to enhance my video making experience. An external monitor helps me adjust focus and check framing when I'm not near the camera. And let's face it, the little 3 inch LCD screen on the back of the camera isn't all that good. Plus, if I put the camera up on a jib or something else, I need to be able to see what's going on. I'd also like to have dual screens for editing and such when I'm on the road. I'm going to show you how easy it is to build an external monitor from an old laptop. Now what I'm going to show you are mostly design choices and you can adapt the materials and methods to suit your needs. I tore apart my old HP. I started by removing components that I might need later, like the RAM and the hard drive. I'm hoarding hard drive platters because I'm either going to build a telescope or a death ray. I haven't decided which. Most of this project was spent removing screws and I saved them all because I'm always in need of odd sized tiny screws like for my micro aquaponic systems bell siphon. Once I had the keyboard off I could finally remove the last two wires. They were for a webcam and Wi-Fi antenna. Once that was loose it was more unscrewing. Aha! There it is. Wow, that's pretty thin, so I guess I won't touch this part. Now the model number for the screen is located right here. I found out what I needed is called a controller. I typed that part number into Google and I got a lot of shopping results. I wanted one with an HDMI to fit my camera and laptop, so I had to narrow my search. There was one on eBay out of China for about $24 and it took about two weeks to arrive. I was initially stumped, but I soon figured out that I was meant to replace all the components on the monitor. I determined that this little circuit board here is the power source for the backlight. The ribbon for the monitor signal came out easily, and the new one went in without much trouble. Now this thing takes 12 volts, so I had to buy a barrel connector from Radio Shack. It was a size M and solder up a power line for testing. Hey, check it out! It's working! It's working! And you can see right down into the twilight zone here. You can see on the power supply, this thing only uses 863 milliamps when it's running and uses slightly less than two when starting up. So now I know that I only need a 24 watt power supply. I was going for maximum portability. So then I saved the monitor's hinges because I thought I might need them later. I wanted to use 1 8 inch Baltic birch for a backer, but it can warp and I didn't want to step up to a quarter inch Baltic or MDF for the same reasons. So I cut a piece of frosted scrap acrylic and it worked out really nicely. I marked the hole locations for the signal ribbon and for the backlight power because I wanted everything on the back side of the monitor. Then I drilled and cut along all my marks. I'd say I spent about half an hour deciding how I wanted to lay everything out. Here it is really sped up. I wanted to get everything as compact as possible so the cover plate would be as small as possible. And to make it work I had to lengthen the power wires for the backlight. Then I drilled and tapped the holes for the circuit boards and cover plate. And it looks nice. You can see my lengthened backlight wires here. Now I 3D printed some blue standoffs for my boards and cover plate but you can use regular PCB standoffs from your parts bin. There weren't any instructions included with the kit, but everything is keyed to be idiot proof. Now, I spent several minutes stuffing wires into my slot between the boards. And it all fit quite nicely in the end. I did make a mistake here and printed my button board standoffs the same height as the other board standoffs, so I had to make new ones. I also made some colored buttons. This isn't really necessary, but I thought it would look nice. The tape holds them in place while I flip it over. I'm of the opinion that a little bit of over-engineering is nice. Now the blue tape couldn't stay, so I considered several options. Settling on corner clips. You could of course use nicer looking tape or even glue to get your monitor to stick to the back plate. After it was all done, I replaced the three standoffs with this single piece and embedded some nuts in it so that I could affix a mounting means to it. Because this thing will most likely need to mount to a pole of some kind. I also made a low profile kickstand too so that it could sit on a desk and allow some angle adjustment. I was hoping to recycle the hinges, but they're rather bulky and flimsy for my needs. 
Although I think using them for a stand would be a viable option if your monitor spent most of its time just sitting on a desk. With my long standoff, I can bolt on various attachments to suit different jobs, like this pole clamp version, which I think I'll use most often. Lastly, I needed to secure the power wires for the backlight with something other than the masking tape, and so I settled on a little 3D printed conduit to conceal it nicely. I ordered several step-down voltage converters that put out two amps. One of these will use to power this screen from either a laptop adapter or a LiPo battery. I soldered a barrel connector to the input side along with an XT60 connector. The output side has the other barrel connector for connecting it to the monitor controller. I also soldered a second barrel connector to provide pass-through power if I decide to plug it into my laptop. This was something that I added several minutes after the fact when I realized that I really didn't want to have to carry around a second power supply all the time. I also didn't want to modify my laptop's power adapter, and this version allows me to take this adapter and plug it in anywhere. I didn't affix it to the board either, because it's conceivable that I might want to use this little adapter elsewhere. I'll probably make another one of these though. Well, that's pretty much it. You can see it's really not that hard at all. And most of what I showed you were just design choices. You can, of course, do it differently and just use maybe this as an inspiration. You can see that building an external monitor is really as simple as buying a controller and plugging it in. You can definitely do this yourself, just don't be afraid to try. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson, and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.